Over 100 inmates escape as rainstorm destroys Suleja Correctional Center fence. Flights diverted as fire breaks out at Lagos Airport. Queues return as fuel scarcity hits Abuja, five other states. Another foreign thing, dozens of passengers abducted by suspected jihadists near Bandegara freed in Mali. Hello and welcome to TOS TV's news update. I am Chiamaka Mwafo. Thanks for joining us. Now an unspecified number of inmates have escaped from detention at the Federal Correctional Center located in Suleja following a rainstorm in the town. The storm accompanied by heavy rain around 8 p.m. Wednesday destroyed the fence section of the facility situated just opposite the Emir Palace in the commercial town. A resident, Abdullah Yunura, said the inmate overpowered officials on duty and escaped toward different directions with some of them throwing stones towards volunteers who had attempted to block them. It was learned that three of the inmates were arrested in the night around the neighborhood hosting the facility, with many others being apprehended on Thursday morning around Rafinsai and Konkotsu Axis, located along the Suleja Madala Road. Normalcy has since returned to Suleja town while a search is still ongoing to recover some of the prisoners. Here in the FCT, the police command has said it's aware of a video clip circulating online depicting a robbery incident allegedly occurring in the Federal Capital Territory involving a right-hand drive vehicle. The command police public relations officer, SPI Day Josephine, in a statement on Thursday said, contrary to the narrative, the incident did not take place within the Federal Capital Territory. According to her, Upon meticulous analysis of the video, it becomes evident that the robbery incident did not even occur in Nigeria. She said Nigeria does not allow RHD vehicles on its roads, neither are the roads fashioned to accommodate such cars as seen in the video. The Commissioner of the Police, FCT, CP Bennett Igwe, urges those circulating the video to desist from such actions as it may cause apprehension and unwarranted panic among the populace. The Nigerian military on Thursday closed its camp and withdrew troops in La Alawa community in Shuru local government area of Niger state. Alawa community has been one of communities facing severe attacks by bandits and terrorists in Shuru local government area of the state. The withdrawal of the troops which residents said came to them as a surprise due to renewed attacks in the community and its neighboring communities has caused hundreds of locals, including women, the elderly and children, to vacate their communities, tracking at least 50 kilometers to locate safer places. One of the locals said the withdrawal came two days after the military vehicle stepped on a landmine along Alawa Pandogari Road, leading to unspecified number of casualties. He said the fleeing farmers have hundreds of goats and other domestic animals and other valuables, including food stuff, that they were not able to evacuate due to lack of vehicles. Over in Bronner State, the governor of Azulum is of the opinion that to end insurgency in the northeast region, a military base should be established in Sambisa Forest and around the Lake Chad Basin and Mandara Mountains. He stated this when the House of Representatives Committee on Army visited him at the Brno State Government House in Medugri. He also urged the Army to provide security support and grant access to farmers to engage in their agricultural activities, stressing that it is the only source of livelihood and business opportunities for the communities. The Governor wants the Army to establish military base in Sambisa Forest in the Lake Chad region, explained that ending insurgency in the Northeast remains an end to insecurity in the country. Quantum in an IDV camp is not sustainable. That's increasing prostitution in the IDV camps. That's increasing procreation without care in the IDV camps. That's increasing drug abuse in the IDV camps. 
and there is a donor fatigue in the IDF camp. Donors are providing food and non-food items before. We continue to support the National Assembly as we are working tirelessly in recent times to see the best that we could do to provide all the legal and regulatory frameworks to be able to allow the military and indeed the army to be able to do justice. Now we're moving down south where the fraternal ruler of Iwu Kingdom returned himself in after the defense headquarters declared him and seven others wanted over the killing of 17 military personnel in Okwama. Clement Ikolo has appreciated President Tinubu for his release. The monarch thanked the president for his intervention and other well-meaning Nigerians for their support and concern while in custody of the military. The monarch states, stated this when he visited the Delta State Governor in company of other Delta State traditional rulers in Astaba. Delta State Governor advised him to unite the people of his kingdom and maintain peace for sustainable development. Your intervention not only reaffirms your commitment to the value of justice and fairness, but also underscores your resolve in upholding the rule of law in our great nation. I am deeply saddened by the loss of our gallant members of the armed forces and the untold hardship and displacement suffered by the Okwama community as a result of the actions of unknown elements that must be fished out and made to face the wrath of the law. Let your people be united. Unite with your people. Because you cannot rule outside your kingdom. You cannot be, you cannot be king in London. You can, in UK, you cannot. You are beginning of office. Unite with your people. So that the innocent people will not suffer. Now over in Lagos, the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria FAN has diverted all flight operations from the E-Wing of the Mortala Mohammed International Airport, MMIA, following a fire at the terminal. The fire started in the early hours of Thursday after smoke was detected at E-54 Bridge. It was learned that officials of the airport rescue and firefighting services were swiftly mobilized to contain the fire which has caught a power supply at the section of the old international terminal. Fan, in a statement by its Director of Public Affairs and Consumer Protection, Obiagiliora, confirmed the fire, saying the quick intervention of the airport firefighters saved the day. Many fueling stations were closed in Abuja and about five other states on Wednesday as the scarcity of premium motor spirit, popularly called petrol, caused heavy queues at the few outlets that dispensed the product. Thousands of commuters in the Federal Capital Territory Nasarawa, Niger, Gombe, Sokoto and Anambra states were left stranded at various bus stops due to the scarcity of PMS required by transporters to run their vehicles. This led to a hike in transport fares in the affected states as the few transporters who had patrol raised their rates. It was guarded that the scarcity was due to a shortage in the supply of PMS in the nation's capital and other states as this led to the closure of fueling stations in affected areas. All marketers, however, Ever stated that they would hold a meeting with the management of the retail subsidiary of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, LNPCL, today to know the cause of the shortage and how to tackle it. Under political matters, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party in the 2023 general election, Peter Obi, has called on government at all levels to cut waste and channel the funds to pulling people out of poverty. Obi, who was addressed in a press conference in Abuja on Wednesday, said this could be achieved by tackling challenges in education and health sectors. The former Anambra state governor also appealed to wealthy Nigerians to join him in providing water and sanitation, among other amenities, to Nigerians. I'm appealing to government at all levels, federal state and local government. We're in crisis 
It is time to cut all waste. Put all resources in this challenge of pulling the poor people out of poverty. This is the news update on Trust TV. Coming up ahead. Banway residents blame government, parents for rising street children. More when we return, please do stay with us. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us and just joining us at the news update on Trust TV. Now a recap of our top stories. Over 100 inmates escape as rainstorm destroys Suleja Correctional Center fence. Flights diverted as a fire breaks out at Lagos Airport. To more stories, the Lagos State Environmental Sanitation Corps has arrested two traders when its operatives demolished shops built around Akiogu Road, Oniru, in the Etiosa local government area of the state. This was disclosed in a post in the official ex handle of the Lagos State Commission of Environment and Water Resources, Tukumbo Wahab, on Wednesday. In a video, while the Lagos State Environmental Sanitation Corps workers began demolishing the stores, some vendors could be seen attempting to save their goods. The post added that during a morning patrol at the Leki Aja area, some officials of the Lagos State Environmental Sanitation Corps demolished some kiosks along Chevron Drive. Tukumbo stated that after the traders were driven out last week, they moved back to the same location and two people were arrested. Over in Benway State, residents of Makurdi, the state capital, have called on government at all levels as well as parents to do more to reduce the carnage of street children in the state. This followed the continuous rise in the number of unaccompanied minors on the streets of urban settlements in Benway State. Jimmy Azande reports that these children are recruited into street hawking, prostitution and child labour, with many of them trafficked to unknown destinations. Here's his report. Child labour, which manifests in acts such as street trading, hacking and other forms of violations have over time pushed many Benway kids to the streets. However, in recent times, the cost of living may have exacerbated the situation in the state as the number has witnessed a noticeable rise. For most of these things on the streets, into hawking and uh, prostitution, one, there are factors. The factors are this. Uh, a situation whereby a, a man has two to three wives uh, in, an, in, a, in a harsh economy like this. Uh, Tendency for children paying their school fees, looking after their welfare is difficult. So they go into prostitution, hawking, hard labor, so on and so forth. Residents are alleging that the government is not doing enough to control the rising population in Nigeria as well as create an avenue for parents to have the resources to take care of their dependents. The poverty that we are roaming around makes children, a lot of children in this country or in this state are roaming street by street by street because government is not checkmating our population. Government is not checkmating the food that can produce in the state to feed us. So some young men are not capable of feeding their children. That's why when they have the process of uh, a marriage, they cannot even feed their wife, not to talk of children. So children go about going on the street, some engage in the minor job. Many believe the government can change the narrative if the right policies are put in place to protect children who are the future of the country. One of the things we must also look at again is that we must ensure that uh, governments uh, sanction parents who allow their children, who, um, who allow their children to embark on uh, hawking. Because in most cases, these children are exposed to very uh, bad uh, situations and which they cannot control because they are still very young at that age. And I think that uh, by the time government initiate the process of sanctioning parents, uh, they will be able to learn from that, from that perspective. And again, I also want to believe that uh, they should increase sensitization among uh, the publics. Child rights advocates are saying that leaving the kids on the streets is a ticking time bomb that the Nigerian government needs to avoid. Jimmy Azandi, Trust TV News, Makodi. 
journalists having advised to adopt data sourcing as a technique that will enable them report complex stories that will be insightful and precise. Stakeholders of the media industry gave the advice of the three-day workshop on advanced data journalism for Northeast journalists in Medugri. Organized by Daily Trust Foundation with support from the MacArthur Foundation, Trust TV's Beatrice Kuruzzi tells us more. The workshop which brought participants across the Northeast region was aimed at training journalists on how to use data sourcing, infographics, and other advanced digital tools in reporting and writing stories in simpler formats using computer-assisted reporting skills. The chairman of Daily Trust Foundation, Billy Abala, said the workshop plans to enhance credible and relevant journalism in Nigeria, especially investigative journalism. Uh, since 2017, the MacArthur Foundation became interested in improving the capacity of journalists with the ultimate end of holding the government responsible for its actions or inactions. In short, good governance. If journalists could hold the government responsible, then uh, possibly there will always be deviance, but most of the times uh, there would be accountability. The Borno State Commissioner of Information, while commending the organizers, said it considers journalists as partners in development and advised participants to put into practice the knowledge acquired from the training. Uh, the journalists should be mindful of bias reporting. That is the aspect where we have problem with government. Once it is treated, once the report is balanced, you will not have, um, what do you call it, uh, problem with the government. Participants were trained on the basics of extracting, converting and analyzing data using relevant tools and conversion to infographics and visual data. I, I believe it's going to take me to greater level in terms of embracing digital uh, uh, experience in putting out my reporting. And it will also help me to on how to search and uh, make use of uh, data in terms of uh, um, reporting some of the government activities, uh, not just uh, quoting figures, but finding out how those figures are much. I've learned that now we have uh, some applications that are going to ease our work like such as uh, ai and the rest a uh, grammarly uh, application and uh, you we will now know how to use uh, data to generate to write a story there is what they call the uh, assisted um, computer assisted reporting Organizers expect that by the end of the three-day training, the knowledge gained will change the style of reporting with time. Bitro Skuruti, Trust TV News, Meduguri. Now away from Nigeria, local reports have said that several hostages abducted by suspected jihadists near Bandaigara in central Mali have been freed. Local groups and officials in Mali had been calling for the release of more than 110 people kidnapped by suspected jihadists on Tuesday, April 16. With no reliable figures yet, reports said several dozens of people were released on Wednesday, mainly villagers whose authorities had signed informal, quote, peace agreements with some jihadist groups operating in their zone. Still on the foreign scene, families of Ethiopia 737 Mark's crash victims are seeking the revival of criminal charge against Boeing government officials in Washington met with about a dozen family members of people killed when a Boeing 737 Max crashed in Ethiopia in 2019. The families want the Justice Department to revive a criminal charge against the company. Boeing reached a settlement in 2021 that let it avoid prosecution on a charge of defrauding regulators who approved the MAX. Boeing has been reaching confidential settlements with the pa families of passengers who died, but the relatives of those killed in the Ethiopia crash 
are continuing to press the Justice Department to prosecute the company in federal district court in Texas where the settlement was filed. The crash in Indonesia and Ethiopia killed 346 people. It appears to us that the Justice Department is continuing to give a wealthy, powerful, well-connected corporation benefits that any other defendant in the criminal justice system would never get. If the Justice Department moves to dismiss the charges against Boeing this summer, we will fight them at every opportunity. We've been trying to understand the decision-making, the exchange of information between the Department of Justice and Boeing uh, that led them to make that sweetheart deal with Boeing. And we've been calling for uh, this DPA to be reopened so that we can have a fact-finding process, make sure that uh, the Boeing principles are criminally prosecuted. I would say to the flying public, hold them to account because they're not holding Boeing to account and they're not holding themselves to account. And if we fail to do so, we're literally risking and putting our lives in the hands of people that don't mind playing a roulette game or, you know, yeah, risking our lives. And in sports, Everton may have applied the final blow to Liverpool's Premier League title challenge as they beaten the Cup 2-0 in Merseyside Derby at the Goodson Park on Wednesday night. The 2-0 triumph came with what they will regard as the glorious bundles of inflicting potentially irreparable damage to Liverpool. This match was clear as the famous old stadium echoed to the thorns of, quote, you lost the league at the Goodson Park as a leggy, lackluster Liverpool banged their heads on the brick wall that was Everton's defence and Arsenal goalkeeper Jordan Pickford. It was 39 years to the night since what is widely regarded as the most famous evening in Goodson Park's history when Bayern Munich were overpowered in the European Cup Winners' Cup semi final. And that's it for the news update at this hour. For more news programs and documentaries, please do well to follow us on all our social media platforms and on our YouTube live stream. I am Chiamaka Mwafo. Thank you for joining us.